Welcome, everybody, to uh, our second State of the Town. Um, it's nice to have so many people here on such a beautiful day. I'm surprised some of you even showed up because it's so nice outside. Um, there are note cards in the back. We're only taking questions from note cards. Otherwise, we end up some, with some rambly discourse at the dais. So the easiest thing to do is write a question down. We will try to get to as many as we can. I will try to sort them categorically so we can sort of talk about the same things at the same time. Um, I'm going to open with just some brief comments. Before I start, um, I want to make a um, just a quick comment <coughs> if any of you are here because of the tragedy that happened on Friday at, at Bridge Street in the Wellington, which is just terrible. Um, we don't have any official statement yet because the State Patrol has not released their findings. Rick and Shannon have been instrumental in reaching out to the community um, to talk about community needs. We had a meeting with the HOA and a new group called Safer Summit Streets um, with Rick, Shannon, myself, and the chief. At 3 o'clock, we had an hour or so meeting. If you want to voice any, any questions like, why don't you put speed bumps in Wellington, that stuff is all being discussed, but not quite at the council level yet. So I'd appreciate it if we didn't even go there during this discourse tonight. There will be an HOA meeting for those of you that live in the Wellington tomorrow at the rec center at 530. That's a great place if you have some serious concerns that you want to voice. Um, this thing will work its way through and eventually get to the council level where the council will decide what kind of funds need to be spent since that's more our, our bailiwick. So, so what's going on in the town? All kinds of stuff. We've had a, a busy year. Um, the biggest thing right now is we have an open council seat, as many of you know. We've had 21 applications. Several of those people are in the audience this evening. Um, May 22nd, which is Tuesday, we'll be making a decision. And uh, it's a hard decision. There's some great applicants. Um, so it, it's a tough one. And I'm sure everybody has been losing sleep over <laughs> who's going to get picked, because I know I have. Um, this was the second year of paid parking. And uh, we feel like it's sort of got its legs now. We think it's uh, been fairly successful. We think we've solved some of the issues, although not all of them. Um, as most of you know, we canceled our, I shouldn't say canceled, let me say postponed the parking garage at Tiger Dredge and F lot for the time being. Um, we still hope that there will be some conversation with Vale over the use of South Gondola. And while, as of right now, we're not talking to each other, I always hope that there is some thawing. Um, we had some great discussions for a couple of weeks. We got fairly close, um, Rick and I thought we got fairly close to an agreement and it fell apart and that's just how these things go. So we're hoping to maybe get back on that um, sooner than later. Um, we're developing uh, plans for the roundabout at Village Road. Um, of course, with all this stuff, we're doing things like transit. Transit has been a, an amazing success. We moved a million people in 2017. Just think of that. This is a town of about 5,000 permanent residents, and we moved a million people on our bus service. That is pretty awesome. So uh, I think we, we should be very proud of that. We did test out an electric bus, and uh, it was successful. If you saw it, that's not the bus we're buying. That thing's a good 15 feet longer than any bus we would normally use, but, uh, but, but successful. Um, also in the same vein, improved lighting, improved walkability. Um, we've done some sidewalk improvements, some walkability improvements, a lot of changes in light, uh, light bulbs to LEDs um, with greater lumens. We're adding light poles to create shorter distance between lights on some of the areas we have some real darkness. Um, workforce housing, Blue 52 is well underway. Uh, there is a huge need, as you know, for housing in the community and Blue 52, which the town is undertaking, has been a huge success. Um, they're just selling immediately. So there's, there's uh, 
That has been wonderful. Um, capital projects, as um, some of you know, we've constructed a new park down by Blue 52 called the River Park. That is being worked on right now. Um, we did have some discussions about a campground in town, and it was we were looking at the area behind Public Works, but decided that we were gonna look elsewhere. Um, with its proximity to Public Works, we thought maybe we'll find something a little different. Uh, we were at the end of a clubhouse remodel. If any of you golfers um, spend much time at the clubhouse, that is being remodeled and it is pretty awesome looking. Rick and I went out a couple weeks ago. It's very cool. Um, any of you that use the rec center will know that we have just about completed our $17 million remodel. And for those of you that wondered what $17 million bought you when you just thought it was the lobby, it bought us a lot. It bought us a new tennis facility, bought us a new cardio deck, a new free weights area, a fantastic kids area. Um, new offices for the staff, um, new workout space, new group workout space. So if you haven't been to the rec center, please go take a walk around. That is, uh, really came out pretty fantastic. Well, and we should mention that May 22nd, so oh, that's right. Tuesday is the, uh, the ribbon cutting and grand opening. So if you Thank haven't you been there, it's side. free all day. All day uh, activities, you can go in, you can try out things free of charge. There are different programs throughout the day. The council will be doing an official ribbon cutting about 2.30 on uh, next Tuesday, May 22nd. So show up. And Elizabeth just reminded me that five million of that rec center money was for um, HVAC, which is not sexy <laughs> like the other stuff is. So uh, we have begun construction on our new water plant, which um, we feel is amazingly critical given the fact that we live in a, at a dead end and have no neighboring water provider that could give us water if anything happened to the tarn. Speaking of the tarn, we have a dam problem with the dam at the Tarn, um, which we will be getting to as soon as the new water plant is open. So we will fix the Tarn dam in a couple of years, but that's on the horizon and was a, that's, that'll be a bit of a sticker shock, but gotta be done. You don't wanna flood the town, I guess. So, um, Some other things we're working on, broadband. I'm sure you've all heard that the town is initiating a broadband study right now to see how we can get fiber to your house. And uh, the way we believe this will work right now is what's called open access. You'll be able to pick your provider. The town's probably not gonna provide service. We'll just provide the access. And then your providers will have to fight it out for who's gonna give you the best deal. And you should be able to go online and with a click of a button, change your provider. And that's what we're hoping to deliver is fast speed at a really reasonable rate. And there's other places in Colorado that have done this that have been wildly successful. So that's where that's going. Uh, financial uh, 2017 ended up with sales tax revenues 3.8% over 2016. 2018 started strong with 11% uh, up through March. Um, we are, of course, with a beautiful day like today, you hate to think about this, but we're getting into wildfire season pretty quick. The town has given $25,000 um, in conjunction with the county's 50, or 25,000 counties given 50,000, uh, and then the rest of the communities plus the fire districts are making up another 25,000 so that there's some extra crews walking around in the woods this year, making sure that unattended campfires are taken care of. Um, last year was a shock, I think, to even people that have lived here a long time with the size of that fire. And I think we've learned that altitude is not a limiting factor for forest fire. So that's something we've, we're concerned about. The council's been talking about it almost at every meeting, um, just getting ready for the season. Hope we can head off anything terrible. Uh, two last things. We're working with the BTO on a 2040 study. The council is concerned that in some respects we are reactionary when it comes to how fast things are going in town, how quickly town's getting inundated with guests, people living here. Um, so we want to look to 2040 given the fact that 5,000 people move to the front range every month, and that's the net number. 
uh, we want to be prepared and we want to make sure we're doing what we can today to prepare for 2040. But it's a hard thing. You know, none of us have a crystal ball. Who knows what's going to happen? But um, that is one of the things we're working on. And then city market, always an issue. Um, Rick in particular has led uh, discussions with both the owner of the city market complex and with Kroger's who owns the grocery store itself. So we're hoping to get some <coughs> kind of re, not necessarily redevelopment, but a, but a refurbish of the inside and maybe some additional, um, maybe some additional square footage. So, but Rick's sort of been spearheading that. Um, everybody on the council has different things that they're really passionate about. Jeffrey's the, our, our open space guy and always tennis has too. been. And tennis. <laughs> A big tennis guy. Uh, Gary and Wendy have been leading the charge on housing. Gary on water. Elizabeth on events. Aaron on child care and works with uh, marketing. Um, and I don't have to do any of those things because these people are so wonderful at what they do. So um, fill out your cards. I'll take the questions. And I'm going to hand them to these, now, these folks to answer. Them up and let us help 